Almost nobody lives in a world of more drama and suspense than a hospital doctor. His life is made up of instant and lonely decisions. Many times it's a matter of life and death. We'll meet such a doctor in our play this week. Dr. Collins, do you see what I see? Mm-hmm. That's the first decent-looking woman I've seen since we've hit this burden. Come on, let's find out who she is. Leave it to me. I wonder if she could be visiting Mrs. Uh, Oglethorpe from here. <laughs> Never. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, may I be of help? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Try me and see. Um, were you visiting one of our patients? No. Thank you, anyway. Dr. Collins. Dr. Franklin? <laughs> yes, sir. Where do you gentlemen think you're going? Uh, uh, just getting a drink of water, sir. The fountain is down that way. Oh, uh, yes, sir. I'll see you gentlemen in surgery in 20 minutes. Will the old man be watching us? Yeah, he's in there now. You ready? Just about. Just a moment, gentlemen. You can't be scrubbed up so soon. Well, we are, Miss Schmidt. No, you are not. At this hospital, we scrub for a full 15 minutes. Kindly begin again. Just a moment, gentlemen. If you will lift up your feet, I want to be sure your shoes are grounded. Miss Schmidt, we are not first-year medical students. We know enough to keep the static electricity away from the anesthesia. Lift up your feet, gentlemen. doing that appendectomy. You act as if you were under the knife. Yeah, I know it. But what do you do about it? You gotta get it through your head that the patient is some other guy. You do what you can, but that's it. Well, I wish I could do it your way. Just let it roll off my back. I just can't help it. Okay. It's your life. Go ahead and kill yourself if you want to. Oh. oh, my ankles. My feet are so swollen I can hardly get in and out of my shoes. Why did I ever let you talk me into coming out here? You know, I'd give anything for just one good night's sleep. Let's spend the summer in New Mexico, he says. The most beautiful country in the world. And there's a great art colony in Bandelier. Full of painters and poets and wild women in adobe huts. The only adobe hut we ever saw was on our way from the railroad station. All right, I'll rub it in. You know, fix it, he says. And I listen to you. We'll get a three-month locum tenens at the community hospital in Bandelier and study under the great Philip Harville, one of the greatest surgeons of all time. Well, given that, he is a great surgeon. We learned more in a month out here than we did the whole year at the medical center. Dr. Collins, Dr. Collins, report to Dr. Harville's office, please. Yes, come in. You sent for me, sir? Yes, I did. Who is this, Dr. Franklin or Collins? This is Dr. Collins. Doctor, I'd like you to meet my daughter, Helen. Your daughter? How do you do? Fine, thank you. Listen, I'll be back at three. Don't forget you have to buy a new suit for the banquet. All right, but let's make it fast. I don't want to spend the afternoon hopping from store to store. My father has been made alumnus of the year. I'm flying east on Monday for three days to attend the reunion of my medical class. Helen, you can go now. Go. Oh. Well, uh, congratulations. It's quite an honor. Oh, don't get misty-eyed about it. It's an empty title designed to turn the heads of fools. Now, you remain in charge here during my absence. In the event there's any major surgery to perform, you'll notify me immediately. Do you understand? I understand, sir. That'll be all, Collins. Thank you. And don't forget to take a blood count of Mrs. Bradbury in the four and uh, give sedation to Mr. Fleming in 18. Quit worrying, will you? It's all down on the charts. If any emergency comes up, don't wing it. Get in touch with me right away, all right? Hey, that's my best silk tie. I know. 
I like it too. Well, you don't need my best tie to walk up and down Main Street. Well, you never can tell where you're going to land. And my silver cufflinks. You wouldn't have a date, would you? Well, it's possible. Come on, give. Who is she? Well, uh, you don't know her, but you have seen her. You don't mean that beautiful creature we saw down the corridor? Mm-hmm. And her name is Ellen Harville. No. Philip Harville has a daughter like that. Well, you never can tell about heredity, can you? Well, what's she doing wasting her time with a scrub intern? I beg your pardon, a rising young surgeon. She knows one when she sees one. And besides, when Papa is away... Dr. Collins, Dr. Franklin, report to the emergency examining room, please. Dr. Collins, Dr. Franklin, emergency examining room, please. Doing not in a sports car. Hit a blind curve. Conscious? No. We found severe contusions in the upper abdomen. Do you know the patient's name? Couldn't find any identification. Excuse me. Is it difficult for you to talk? No. I'm sorry I broke our first date. Well, there are lots of nights in the week. I'm sure we'll make up for it. Well, I should have never bought that sports car in the first place. But you don't know what it's like living all the way out here and being the local untouchable because of who my father is. Those pains are coming back. I must look gorgeous. Well, I wouldn't worry about that. Thanks. You know, you must be darn good. Why? I've never heard my father cuss you out. Do you like it here? Yes, of course. Why? Oh, some people find it difficult to work with father. But he's a brilliant doctor, and I guess that's all that matters in the long run. Yes, I think so. Uh, Guy? What is it? Nothing. I like your first name. Thank you. Can I smoke? Uh, no, I... Uh, I wouldn't if I were you. Well, it's not serious, is it? No, 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 of course not. But, uh, we are going to have to... Uh... <laughs> Examine me from stem to stern. <laughs> I know. You don't dare take any chances with Dr. Harvell's daughter, do you? Nope. I'll be back in a little bit. All right. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Get her to x-ray right away. I'm going to call Dr. Harville. She'll be all right. She's bearing up very well. No, we're waiting for the x-rays right now. I'm afraid the liver is lacerated. Get Dr. Wells in from Santa Fe for consultation. But whatever you do, no surgery. I'm getting on the plane now. I should be there in six hours. All right, but there's a lot of internal bleeding. She could go into shock. Then pump in blood. Keep the fluid level up. Use whatever you've got. And remember, keep your hands off her. Where's Dr. Wells? I just spoke to his phone service. He's away on a fishing trip. They said they'll let us know as soon as they heard from him. She's hemorrhaging badly. You better come at once. She's in shock. What's your systolic and diastolic blood pressure? 80 over 40. And her pulse is so weak and irregular, I can hardly feel it. I think we may have to go in there and stop that bleeding. What time will Dr. Halva be here? Out for three hours. Guy, I, I feel so cold and clammy. You're doing fine. There's nothing for you to worry about. 
you say you might have to operate? Yes, we might have to. Where's my father? He'll be here soon. Now, don't worry. Guy, you'll take good care of me. I haven't really even lived yet. Now, don't worry. You've got a date to eat with me. Nobody stands Guy Collins up twice. Oh, I feel so horrible. So horrible. I told you to wait till he gets here. There's not that much time. The shock is much too severe. We can keep her going on oxygen and level it. Maybe we can. But in three hours, she'd be so weak she wouldn't stand a chance on the operating table. Dr. Harville knows what he's doing. He was diagnosing from 2,000 miles away. Guy, don't. I've got to get in there and stop that hemorrhaging. But you're sticking your neck way out. I'm only worried about one thing. My patient. But she's in shock now. She may not make it no matter what you do. Well, don't you think I know that? I've got to give her the best odds I can. That's not for you to decide. You've had your instructions from the senior physician of this hospital. You're not serious, are you? Guy, nobody can blame you for playing it safe. But if you operate against Harville's express orders and anything should happen to her, you're finished. Do you know that? Well, I just can't let her die. Prepare for surgery. Forceps. Swab. Stats. Probe. Are you there yet? I can't say there's too much hemorrhaging. Swab. Sponge. All right, more stats and a suction. The blood's still coming. I know the wound's too deep and there's too much damage. We're not going to stop the flow of blood by suturing. What are you going to do? We'll have to pack the wound with gel foam. Gel foam. Everything's getting shallower. Well, I'm closing her up right now. Remove the retractor and the stats. Clamps. Hurry. Why am I in an oxygen tent? Just a precaution. You see, I lost a lot of blood. How do you feel? Still cold and clammy. How about you? You look like you could do with some sleep. I'm all right. What's the matter? I can't get enough air. It's a part of the course. It's all right. How'd the operation go? No trouble at all. Where's my father? He'll be here soon. I'm going to ramble. I know it. I'm so cold. You mind if I ramble a little? No. What do you like to do besides read medical books? Oh, uh, all sorts of things. It's pretty vague. I like tennis skiing, chess. 
You wouldn't like poetry, would you? Don't laugh at me. I've always dreamt about meeting a man who liked poetry. I tried to get my father to read it, but he hates it. You don't have to like it if you don't want to. Well, I do, huh? I mean, much as I've read of it. You have a favorite? No, no, one in particular. How about you? You've heard it. It's by Herrick. It goes, gather ye rosebuds while you may. Doctor, something's happening. It's getting so dark. Doctor, I think I ought to say goodbye. You don't lie very well. I'd rather know I really would. You think there's something beyond? There must be. Doctor? Ellen. Gather your rose beds while you may. Old time is a flying, and the same flower that smiles today. Tomorrow be dying. <laughs> surgery. Please, leave us alone. Not now. Please, leave us alone. Both of you. Why'd you do it? Didn't I tell you not to operate? I had to. She was in shock. I gave you instructions. Why didn't you follow them? I tried to. I was afraid if we waited any longer, she'd be too weak to even attempt surgery. No, I would have saved her. I could have done it. Dr. Harvell, my hand was forced. And I told you to keep your hands off her. You murdered her. Don't say that. I've gone over those symptoms in that operation a thousand times. I had to do what I did. You stupid butcher. I'll make sure that you never touch a scalpel again as long as you live. Now get out of my sight. Get out of my hospital! Get out of here! What time is it, Elmira? Seven. She was so young. So young, I, I can't believe it. I know, Philip. No, you don't know. All my life, I've seen nothing but misery and pain. Suffering and more suffering, death and more death. It was the only thing around me that laughed. Philip, you can't keep going over. I never even left the hospital on Sundays. Fifteen years. First time I go away, this is what happens. Nonsense. You can't blame yourself and you can't blame that boy. That's the trouble of the world. No one's ever to blame. Where he is, I told him not to operate. I told him. 
I swear to you, Almira, you'll never get the chance to do it again. I know. I just saw him. He's still here? He's packing. Doctor, we have known each other for a long time. Ever since I came to this country. I remember when we first opened this hospital together. If you're planning to plead this case, I don't want to hear it. Well, you are going to hear it. That boy could have listened to you, played it safe, taken the easy way out. But he cared more about your daughter than his own skin. I am sick and tired of your self-pity, Philip Harwell. You are taking it out on Guy Collins so you can indulge yourself. He killed her. You can't get around that no matter what you say. He had to operate and his technique was flawless. I don't believe it. I was there. You weren't. I ordered him to wait for me. It couldn't happen to you. What about that man with the cardiac last month? That old woman with a brain tumor? The little boy with pneumonia? You tried everything to save them, but it wasn't to be. I'm trying to hurt you, because it's the only way I can make you see what you are doing. Have you forgotten what you tell your interns on their first day? Doctors are only men. God help us. Come in. Forgive me. You did the only thing possible. I know that. We're both lost. You see, I loved her so. How long, gentlemen? Fifteen minutes. A full 15 minutes. Very well. Miss Schmidt, uh, I'd like to uh, thank you. I'd prefer you didn't, Doctor. You had nothing to do with it. I'm interested in medicine, not individuals. Are your shoes grounded? Miss Schmidt! Let me see. Lift your feet up, gentlemen. Four Star Production.